Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and yes, I had a wonderful week away with Mrs Hood, thank you very much for asking, uh, but as a result I've only got time to make a very short video at the end of the weekend before the working week, uh, so I thought I'd do something in the deep sea cabinet with these two wonderful pieces from the Neptune Discovery Lab. <laughs> Good, good. Well, you probably are aware that these two halves kind of fit together uh, via some hinge bricks at the back to make this kind of wonderful looking dome, uh, which I've had a few ideas for using. Uh, one that way as the cockpit of a submarine. Uh, some people suggested that I use them kind of on a string lowered down between two levels as a diving bell uh, under great pressure with observers inside, hopefully not imploding under the pressure, uh, uh, but also just to do what was in that original set, Neptune Discovery Lab 6195 uh, from 1995, where it's kind of a watchtower uh, to spot out uh, baddies approaching, presumably, <laughs> or scary monsters, and heaven knows there'll be quite a few of those in my cabinet. So I thought I'd give that a bit of a try first. Uh, in that respect, it'd be pretty much like the Star Wars watchtowers that you see in a few of the movies, which I never understood either, uh, given in this case we're going to have really poor visibility underwater. <laughs> uh, but in those uh, situations, you had a guy on the surface of a planet who apparently could spot things quicker than radar or space sensors or whatever they have in Star Wars. And then, <laughs> to add insult to injury, the poor guy is armed with a spear. Yeah, like that's going to help against well, Slytherin TIE Fighters or Hufflepuff X-Wings. <laughs> anyway, uh, cool. So uh, the first thing to do on this is to uh, sort out the insides, I think. I'll just put these bricks here as a sort of temporary measure. What I'm going to do is actually make it a bit more uh, good looking, I suppose, because we'll be able to see in through the dome very easily and just tidy up that so it's got some smooth... Oh, surfaces on the inside for attaching this bit to. That looks a lot better already. And then I could add just bricks into these sections here uh, to block them in. But I do want to include this piece, which is quite cool. It's the only uh, two by two slope that I've got that's actually in yellow because the back will stick out of one of these things if I incorporate it into the wall. Uh, and it was from the Aquazone sets, including that uh, Discovery Lab yet again. Uh, but I really like the screen as well because I think there's a submarine on there or maybe it's one of my big sharks, I don't know. Uh, but with kind of a battleships uh, type uh, grid on there. A4, you sunk my battleship. Battleship from Milton Bradley. You sunk my battleship. So uh, yeah, that's something I want to uh, <laughs> include on my uh, setup like that on one side and then we'll be able to see in diagonally onto that. That's why I haven't put it at the front. Uh, but then this starts to look very round and plain. So what I thought instead of using these clunky bricks, I'd actually use modified bricks and include my favourite ever tile. The uh, Or is it my second favourite tile? No, because treble plate's my favourite, isn't it? Uh, so this is the yellow and black stripy hazard tile. Uh, and I figured that would look really good. And if I use a uh, one by one versions of the same brick, I can kind of mount one over and around the screen on that side. So I think as long as we have the hinges facing towards the back, which we would at any rate, then that kind of makes sure that submarines don't bump into this thing and cause it some damage. So I think that is our base kind of dome sorted. We'll have to do some more on the insides. Uh, but my other idea was to mount it on a post because that original set kind of had columns attached to each of these four things, holding it up on four legs. But I thought I'd have this as kind of the top floor, if you will, of a small uh, undersea base. So basically I wanted to have it on a solid tower. Uh, and that's why I've got four of these panel pieces uh, that were originally on a uh, dinosaur uh, base. <laughs> so I've pulled off the stickers using my patented hot tea technique. And I'll use those uh, in a future build. Uh, so I've just got a little bit of sand as a kind of mock-up to attach these onto as ugh, a base and then that is kind of my idea. So I'm going to use some inverted slopes in here to bridge all the gaps uh, but unfortunately that won't give us quite enough uh, of a connection because of that uh, slightly bigger base under there. So before I do that I'm going to add 
some 1x2 plates, but why add boring old 1x2 plates when you could add a little bit of texture as well? So I'm going to use these ones with the ladders on. And then when I add some inverted slopes onto all four of them, we have the possibility of a connection. Hey, now I think that is really interesting already with these sort of bits coming out here and all these different angles. And that is sort of what I got to when I was playing around with it and thought, yeah, I do quite like it as a watchtower, especially if we can't see the uh, hinge bricks at the back. Uh, but the next thing I was thinking was, well, how do you get in this thing? Uh, in the original, I think, because it was on those columns, as I said, I think the point was that it would sort of open up like the clamshell. A diver would go in, presumably close the lid, and then it would have all the water pumped out. But then you'd have to work in your soggy wetsuit and you'd get, it'd be ever so itchy, I imagine. So um, I thought what I would do is have this in uh, universe be permanently closed. And maybe there's a way in on a door down here or something like that. And I may have to do that on a next level and make this even taller and even more watchtower like. So I thought if you were coming in down here, you'd need some sort of an airlock at the base here that you'd come up in. So maybe the divers go in here, take off all their wetsuits, put on their normal clothes, and then come into this bit where they could seal it off from the outside. So in that respect, I've just built a little setup here of a round four by four brick with a, um, a dish on the top. And one of those steering wheels looks very much like a, um, oh, thing that you turn to seal two sections of a base apart from each other. And I think that stands out quite well, being grey against the black. And then I think we've got a nice area for some scientists to work in. So I've got two scientists from my diving sets, uh, and I've swapped one of the heads out, one of the hairs, so they look slightly different, and they look suitably sciencey with their specs, <laughs> science types. And I thought one could be taking pictures out of the dome with a camera, and one could be working on that console over there. And then that would be my small scene on the inside uh, of my cabinet. So we've got somebody there. You can see that computer screen quite well. You can see the round uh, bit of the airlock. I think that looks really good with all these different angles. Yeah. And I've not decided exactly where I'm going to put this. I could put it uh, on the level that we've done mostly near the end of the uh, uh, tunnel that's being built, the undersea tunnel. And maybe that's to link up with this or maybe even a higher version of this. Uh, or I could have it just sticking out of all of the coral. Imagine a sea of coral down here uh, on the next level down. Uh, but for now, I'm definitely going to install it on the one that we've done. Uh, and I might just move it later if it's slightly inappropriate. Uh, now, I do have some studs on the top. So the thing I thought I would do also from that Neptune Discovery Lab set is add a 2x2 two two kind of submarine tile. But I don't know. That looks a bit weird if you ask me. I think I might be able to do better. But there is my very glary reflective on my filming lights uh, undersea watchtower. Well, I've been thinking about it some more, and I do think this needs to go up another level, partially because I don't think there's much room to do a believable door on any of this one. Uh, so I've actually done a mock-up for the, the next stage of this build in uh, studio. Yes, rather than LDD, you'll be very proud of me. <laughs> Moving on to the more modern uh, system of designing things uh, virtually. Uh, and this is what I came up with, with a lovely render. Uh, and it includes basically one of the 4x6 uh, airlock doors that I've incorporated elsewhere of my base, which I don't have pieces for. Uh, I also don't have pieces, uh, two more of these uh, corner panel pieces in yellow, which I need to get because I didn't anticipate doing another level. Uh, also, there's even some modified bricks that are only available in the up house so far, uh, 43217 from this year. And that only has six of, uh, four of them, and I need six. So basically... Uh, I'm probably going to have to do an order to Lego bricks and pieces uh, to take this up a level. So for now, I think we'll stick with this height. Uh, but I've also been thinking about this top. Uh, and I could put antenna on it, but that doesn't make too much sense. Could put periscope on. Uh, that doesn't make much sense. The original uh, Neptune Discovery Lab had a kind of propeller on it. Maybe to represent some sort of fan to keep it oxygenated. I don't know. Don't really like that idea either. So I thought... Well, what's the point of having a um, 
watchtower if there's pretty much nothing you can do about uh, the thing that is very scary that's approaching when you do spot it. So I thought we needed some sort of defences, essentially. Much better than a single man with a single spear is basically a harpoon turret. So I've built this little uh, construction here, and I've got one of the stickers with the hammerhead shark on. That's the logo that keeps repeating on the much larger base that will be on the main level. Uh, and I thought that could go on a turntable piece uh, on the back and kind of uh, point in every direction and elevation. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do there. And I just have to work out what to attach into those two things. Uh, I could have done it differently and included these, but they are just too big and too dark, quite frankly. So I'll put those on something else further down. I've got these ones as well. Uh, and if I put them, just hold them in place. I don't know, they look a bit to, I don't know, grapple hooky. I'm not sure that would actually penetrate something uh, nasty. So yeah, I'm going to leave that. So it's essentially whether I want a pair of silvery harpoons or maybe to keep in with the rest of the color scheme, some dark bluish gray ones. So that's what I'm going to try. So I'm just going to put them oh, very simply into this. because I don't think it'd be ridiculously heavily armed, but just a bit of defenses in case uh, a curious beastie comes a bit too Oh, golly, close. That one's tighter than the first one. There we go. Oh, so how about that? I think that's a little bit better than that tile, isn't it? And it can be sort of spinning around uh, looking for targets. I mean, already we've got that giant crab that it could be shooting them at, uh, though that's quite heavily armoured, or those uh, big sharks, of course. So yeah, there is my turret for inclusion in the deep sea cabinet. Uh, and there's one thing I'm going to add at the same time. Somebody very sent, uh, kindly sent in this poly bag, 30370 Ocean Diver from 2020. And it's about time I put this guy in, cruising around. Uh, and just to make it look very animated, what I've done is taken out the normal 1x2 that was in the build and replaced it with one with a clip. So I can attach it to a plant and that can be zooming him along in apparent midair or mid-water, uh, more accurately. So, cool, let's get these two builds into the cabinet, see how it looks, uh, and then I'll put the pieces that I need for the next level onto my wanted list and get on with getting them. Well, that sea scooter looks great there in the cabinet, on his way to help at the building site of the sea tunnel, which will presumably, when complete, link up with this side of our new undersea watchtower, heavily armed with harpoon guns. And yeah, I think it looks really good there. Uh, it might look even better when it's a bit taller. I'm not sure. It might block a few views, uh, but I do always like to have something quite tall and prominent in the foreground rather than tucked away at the background uh, in my setups, because it kind of makes you want to look around the tall thing uh, from all different angles. It's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think you'd want the tall thing at the back, but sometimes putting it right at the front is much more impactful. So there we go. Yeah, I think that looks quite good, actually. Uh, I've built it in to the sand just a little bit. I mean, that'll need changing again if we add another level to the bottom. Uh, and I'm aware that this is kind of missing it at the moment. I think there'll be some sort of end point. There'll be a junction uh, between that and that. And it just means you can get very easily from the airlock door in here uh, to the, well, what would it be? A monorail, I suppose, going through there to the lab that's uh, the secret lab where all the testing's going on in uh, that's viewable from the uh, side glass, if you remember. So we've got our rotating turret with logo. Uh, this, at least for our purposes, we can open to have a look inside. Uh, and it's a pretty simple build. I just love all the shapes of those pieces and incorporating the old things into uh, and alongside the newer things is really great. Oh, that's a nice scene there, isn't it? Well, that's going to be the thumbnail with the scooter in the middle of the two builds. Yeah, so do tell me what you think. Uh, do tell me if you think you want uh, it extending in height, if I've got the location right. Also, if I should put it on the floor below that will be covered with coral with the Silent Mary down there, I think uh, either way it will look good. But yeah, this whole level with all of its yellow bases sort of tied together is really coming together. Uh, the fact that this has got a blue glass dome is a sort of a shame, I suppose, but we can't get it in clear to match all of the more modern round ones 
uh, all over here. So anyway, yeah, I think that looks really good. Not bad for something thrown together quite quickly in a short period of time. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be a brick haul because it's uh, Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll have one more video before my usual annual break of having August off. Oh no, Robin, you've only just come back. I know, but uh, I'm sure it won't be too long a wait until the beginning of September where we'll have loads more builds, ideas, and some quite big announcements, actually, I think, uh, for different areas outside the city. <laughs> yeah, it just gets worse, this addiction, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, until all of that, see you! Yeah, really interesting shapes.